Let's bring in Harris Associates partner David Harrow, uh, investor in lots of banks and, and companies abroad right now. David, how does the Fed decision and, and forecast today fit into where you think the market's going? Well, given the way we invest as long-term value investors, this decision, which I think you pretty well handicapped, re really doesn't have an influence. I mean, we look to buy businesses with good cash flow streams, good managements at low prices. And this type of news and activity only alters short-term price. It really doesn't impact the medium and long-term valuation of a business. So if it creates some disturbances, it might give us some short-term trims and ads. But generally speaking, I think everyone realizes that, yes, the Fed was extremely late, and perhaps they've now overdone it. And as a result, you know, they're going to start slowing down and pausing and what have you. But over this period of time, businesses have already adjusted to the higher cost of money. The days of free money are over. And this is why it's a little uh, perplexing that once again we have a new mania, the AI mania, where people just blindly flood money into businesses that are concepts and barely earn money. And meanwhile, value stocks, companies that generate good cash flow streams, uh, good yields, good cash flow yields are still, you know, this dispersion between value and, and growth has now picked up again. And I think this is where the opportunities are and investing in businesses that generate good, healthy, robust cash flow streams that you can buy at low prices, such as and, what we yeah. see overseas. I know, and you, and you still like the banks, even, even with the credit suisse, you're out of that, uh, of course. BNP Paribas and Tesla, Lloyds Banking, you're still heavily exposed there. The, the way the Fed impacts you is that now the ECB seems more hawkish than the Fed. And they, they have a decision this week as well, and I don't think there's a lot of mystery around what's going to happen there. And they could send a signal that more is coming. Doesn't that, doesn't there, that matter for the valuations of Europe versus U.S.? Oh, this, um, this in a way may help us a bit because what has happened is international equities have wildly underperformed U.S. stocks over the last 10 or 15 years. And it's been because of two reasons. Reason number one is valuation compression. S&P 500 trades at 18, 19 times earnings. European equities trade at you know, 11, 12 times earnings. Reason number two has been the strength of the dollar. And this strong dollar, meaning the undervaluation of European currencies, now provides us an opportunity as an overseas investor to buy undervalued equities using an undervalued currencies. And when the ECB catches up a little bit with the Fed in terms of rate increases, you should start to see an impact on these currencies and what has been a headwind, weaker European currencies should become a tailwind. Number two is the impact on banks in Europe cannot be understated because for the last 10 years, the banks had to struggle with negative, not real interest rates, negative nominal interest rates. They deposited money at ECB and had to pay for the pleasure. Now, finally, Europe has positive interest rates. And this, too, should really enable the European financials to do well. So you're able to buy them at low prices. A BNP trades at 60, 65 percent of book value. It's throwing off a ton of cash. Uh, Lloyd's Bank should probably throw up enough cash in the next six years to equate to its market cap. I mean, these are really good values, good businesses and good franchises in an environment which is conducive to their earnings power.